What if I told you that there was a way for adventurers to start a campfire without using a bow drill, a lighter, matches, or a flint and steel? Greetings adventurers, my name is Kramer, and I am super excited for today's video because when I found out about this contraption, my mind pretty much exploded. This is called a fire cylinder, or a fire piston, or my favorite term for it, a fire syringe. Now before we get into this contraption and how it actually works and why you should be using it, we need to talk a little bit about the history first, because if we're going to unravel the history of a world that never existed, we have to know a little bit about our own history. So the fire piston, or the fire syringe, has existed actually throughout many different cultures, even way before the medieval period, especially in places like Africa and in Asia. And traditionally, they would have been made out of wood or horn or perhaps bamboo, if bamboo grew in the area that this culture resided in. But they also existed in Europe, not quite in the medieval period, though. They actually were invented just around uh, the mid 1700s to the early 1800s. And they were popularly used very, very briefly from about 1802 to 1826 when the friction match was invented and then the fire syringe fell out of fashion. So while not necessarily medieval, we discuss in this video right here why medieval fantasy isn't actually entirely medieval a lot of the time. And I think that it's okay to be pulling from other time periods so long as the thing could exist in a fantasy universe and there's a reason for it to exist in a fantasy universe, I think that it can exist in a fantasy universe. European examples are also made out of something like metal, perhaps copper. Which brings us to what actually is a fire syringe, how does it work, and why would an adventurer want to use one? Well, a fire syringe is essentially two pieces. There's one main tube, and then there's the actual plunger, very much like an actual syringe. If this had uh, two little grips right there on the side, it would look a lot like a syringe right there. The only the difference is that this doesn't actually have a needle or a point or anything. It's just it's just a tube with one opening for the plunger. The plunger actually has a tiny o-ring on it. That's because this is a modern version, so we're using a rubber o-ring. In the time period, I haven't actually been able to find what they would have used in order to create that seal on the inside of the tube. I'm imagining it would be something like rawhide, but I don't actually know. So if anyone actually does know what they would have used for the seal on a fire syringe from any culture, uh, go ahead and drop that down in the comments and I will pin the comments so that everyone can learn. But the way this works is there's a tiny little divot or an indent in the end of the plunger and that is so that you can place a bit of char material, something like char cloth or amadou. You just place a tiny little bit of that in there and then that goes right into the tube. Now the magic happens Pun intended. The magic happens when you depress the plunger as quickly as possible and the internal temperature of the air inside the tube heats up high enough that the char will actually take an ember if you've done it correctly. So that you then remove the plunger from the tube and you are left with this tiny bit of char material with an ember inside. You can then remove the char material with the ember in order to light your fire. It's actually, from that point on, very similar to if you were going to be using a flint and steel, where you would get a spark to catch on a tiny piece of char material and then from there you would have to build that ember into an actual flame. So it's definitely not as convenient as using matches or a lighter, which is why this went out of fashion the second that matches were invented. But why would you actually want to use one of these in the field? Well, for one, it's a little more anachronistic, it's a little more uh, in the past than using matches. So if you like that feeling, if you like the idea of using an antiquated piece of technology in order to start your fire, even though it's harder, I can appreciate that. And that is a major reason why you might want to use this, just because it's different. It just feels different. Living anachronism. But there are actually some real, very tangible advantages advantages to using something like this over something like a flint and steel. For one, uh, the learning curve is simply not as steep. Uh, I have a whole bunch of steels, I have some flints, and it takes a lot of practice because you have to aim the spark so that it lands on the ember. It's not just boom, done, you have flame. It's not that simple. So there's a much steeper learning curve when you are using a flint and steel. Whereas something like this, you simply put it in and you depress it as quickly as possible. And we'll get into some of the ways that you can do that effectively uh, later, but it's essentially foolproof. There are ways that you could screw it up, you could overpack uh, the end with char material, and if the seal's not proper, you're gonna be letting extra air in and the temperature might not get high enough, but within one to two tries, I was getting embers very consistently. And when we're talking about creating an ember so that you can then get a flame from it, there are also lots of other real world factors to consider 
uh, that you don't have in a controlled environment. For instance, I could practice with my flint and steel inside and I could get really good with it, but the second I go outside and there's like wind or it's raining or it's snowing, anything can disrupt that spark from hitting uh, the char cloth and creating an ember. And then once that ember is lit, it's also super exposed to the elements. If there's just a, too much wind, it's gonna go out. Whereas something like this, the ember is contained in here while you're starting it. So you don't have to battle your environment while you're getting the ember going. Uh, the danger comes when you take that out, you then have to transfer that ember safely and then create a flame from there. But this is a much easier way of creating an ember when you're out in the field without having to worry about getting sparks to catch on char material. Another excellent thing about this is it goes straight from having char material to having that char material have an ember in it where you don't have to have all of these additional parts. It's just two pieces. Aside from that, char cloth is all you need and you will have an ember. But with the flint and steel, while it's also two pieces and both of them are obviously integral, you need flint and steel, you need the plunger and the tube, uh, these don't go anywhere, whereas a flint will eventually degrade. It'll lose its sharpness, it'll just break off into bits, and you'll have to get another piece of flint eventually, whereas this sort of cuts out the middleman, as it were, and goes straight from char cloth to flame. Depending on the size you get, these can be nice and compact, and these are also very easy to obtain. I got this one on Etsy for like $20, and there's a link in the description. I don't get anything from that, but uh, the guy who made these certainly does, and I think he deserves it. He did a great job, so the link for this specific one that I got will be in the description, and there are tons of different fire piston syringe options available on Etsy because these are very common in the bushcrafting community. It's also just fun. It's like a fidget toy. So let's quickly demonstrate how you would use something like this. You would start by getting the two pieces and a little bit of your char cloth or amadou, whatever your char material is. And you wanna use just a tiny, tiny little bit, not so small that the ember is gonna burn through it instantly, but you don't wanna overpack it. It shouldn't be this giant lump of char material at the end of the piston. So once that is loaded up, all you have to do is insert that in. I haven't had trouble with the char material coming out of the end of this when I turn it upside down, but depending on the design or what type of char material you're using, you might not be able to just stick it in like that. You might have to plant that on the ground somewhere and then put the tube up over the top. And that's fine because the easiest way that I have found to light these effectively is actually to grab it by the tube and brace it up against the table and then slam it onto the table. And that is how I've been able to consistently get a char. That is how I've seen other people uh, consistently get chars. But I imagine if you were strong enough and fast enough, you could just plunge it like this, or you could brace the tube on the table and hit the top that way and then pull it out. There's different methods. And one of the reasons why this really sort of captured my imagination uh, for a fantasy universe is because the term fire syringe just strikes me as so, so alchemical. I mean, it is actually using science in order to start a fire. I mean, to some degree, to a lot of a degree, all starting a fire is science-based somehow, but using a syringe in order to start a fire just sounds like something that particular types of characters might lean towards, like an alchemist or a physician or even a wizard or a magician, something like that. And so because there are so many different types of ways for adventurers to start fires, it sort of begs the question, what type of way would your character or the character you're writing about perhaps uh, use to start a fire? It's not just, well, everyone has a flint and steel, perhaps. Maybe some people have flint and steels and other people haven't practiced that skill. They don't have that in their survival toolkit, but they have a fire syringe instead. And also it made me start thinking about, well, what if there actually was a syringe with a needle on the end and when you plunged it, fire just like came out of the end of it? That's what I originally thought it was when I found the term fire syringe. That's not what happens. But in a fantasy universe, you could create something like that. You could have someone create a fire syringe where you just like press it down and fire pops out at the end and boom, you have a campfire. So I hope that gave you some food for thought. I'll see you very soon. And in the meantime, I'd like to wish you good luck on your adventures.